Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of software testing basics. Here are the topics that will be covered. Number one, what is software testing? Number two, why do we need to test? Number three, core terminologies of software testing. Number four, different types of test. Number five, different levels of test. Number six, different suites of tests. Firstly, what is software testing? It is an activity conducted before releasing a software product to the public. The purpose of it is to evaluate if quality standards can be met by this product. Through testing, we can have a chance to find out problems and fix them before release. So why do we test? The primary reason is to make sure users will be happy when they use our product. And if we don't test our product and directly release it to users, they may encounter errors when using it, and then they will become unhappy. And finally, our business is going to have a problem sooner or later. In this section, let's go through some core terminologies of software testing. This is to equip yourself with fundamental domain knowledge. Number one, AUT. It stands for application under test, which refers to the product we are testing against. Number two, test case. A test case is a short document which describes a test scenario with expected results. A test case is normally designed and created by test engineers. In a test case, we can define a test case title, which summarizes the test scenario it is about. We can also define a test precondition, where you can describe any precondition for this test case. We must define test steps, which is a step-by-step -step guide on how to run this test scenario. We must also define an expected result we should get once we run the test, follow those test steps. I have a sample test case here. The test case title is Verify a registered user can sign in successfully. Test precondition is This test user is a registered user. And test steps are Number one, go to sign in page. Number two, input username and password. Number three, click login button. The expected result is this user can sign in correctly. When testing a product, many test cases will be designed. They will test the product from different angles. During test execution stage, test engineers should follow the defined test cases to perform the actual testing. And finally, compare the actual result with expected result. If they match, the test result of this test case is pass. If they don't match, then test result is fail. Number three, bug. In software testing, a bug means an incorrect behavior of your application under test. Normally, a bug is found by comparing actual behavior you get during testing with the expected behavior defined by a test case. If they don't match, it is a bug. Number four, test plan. A test plan is a documentation of the plan of your testing for a product release. In this plan, 
major content should be covered are test goals, test scopes. That clarifies which parts of your product your tests are going to cover. Test strategies. It defines test environment specifications, which types of tests are going to be conducted, how test data will be managed, your test automation strategies, and more. Test schedule. It normally defines when your test should be started and when should test be signed off. Number five, test build. It is the version of your product produced by developers. It contains all product features you want to test before product release. Number six, test environment. This is where tests are executed. Once a test build is ready, it should be deployed to the test environment so that test can be started there. Number seven, test report. It is a formal report summarizing your test results. Content should include how many test cases were executed, how many of them passed, and how many of them failed. Number eight, code coverage. It means how many logic in your product source code were executed by your tests. A commonly used measure of code coverage is line coverage. For example, line coverage 80% means 80% lines of your product source code were executed by your tests. The higher your code coverage is, the better. Number nine, test sign off. It is an official announcement that the quality of this product is good enough for a release so that release engineers will proceed the product release. Number 10, manual test. It refers to a way how test cases are executed. For manual test, test cases are executed by human. Number 11, test automation. It refers to a way how test cases are executed. For test automation, test cases are executed by test code instead of by human. In this section, I'll introduce major types of test. Number one, function test. Function test focus on measuring function of your product. The basic process of function test is once you have test cases designed, you execute those test cases against your product and compare actual test output with expected test output. If they match, the test pass. If they don't match, it's a bug. Number two, performance test. Performance test focus on measuring performance of your product. The main purpose of performance tests are find out bottleneck in your product, find out capacity of your product, or stability of your product. Normally, performance test is conducted by simulating large group of concurrent user requests and keep hitting your product for a relatively long period of time. Then collect those important performance metrics at both client side and server side. Finally, analyze them to see if they can meet your expectations. Some of the major performance metrics are listed here, but I'm not going to talk about them in detail here as this video is just an overview. I will create in-depth videos on performance tests and talk about them in great details there. 
Number three, security test. Security tests focus on measuring if your product is vulnerable to security attacks. Common security attacks include XSS attack, SQL injection, DDoS attack, and man-in-the-middle attack. Similarly, I will talk on those topics in other videos instead of here. Number four, localization test and internationalization test. These tests focus on measuring if your product can work well for users from different countries. For example, you may need to display your product in different languages. Number five, usability test. This type of test basically focus on measuring if the product design is user friendly, and could users work with your product easily and conveniently. In this section, I'll introduce different levels of test, from bottom level to the top level. They are unit test, component test, integration test, and system end-to-end -end test. It's easier to understand these tests by looking at the diagram at the right side. Let's say this is a simplified system architecture of an online meeting room booking system. An user can submit a request from Web UI to book a room. Web UI will then pass this user request to booking service. Booking service will then query room service to see if this room is available to book. If room service tells booking service this room is okay to book, then booking service will book that room and tell this user the room was booked successfully. In this system, unit test can be conducted at web UI source code level, booking service source code level, and room service source code level. The purpose of unit test is to measure if each individual function in product source code is working correctly. Component test can be conducted by testing web UI itself without connecting to booking service, or testing booking service itself without connecting to room service, or testing room service itself. The purpose of component test is to measure if each component can work correctly on their own when running as an independent service. Integration test can be conducted at booking service and during the test, booking service should connect to room service. So the purpose of integration test is to test how well several components can work together. Finally, system end-to-end -end test should be conducted at the web UI level and all components in this system are connected together. The main purpose of this type of test is to measure if the whole system can work correctly as a whole. Now let's look at different test suites. Number one, a test suite is a group of tests organized for a specific test purpose. Number two, smoke test or sanity test. It means testing with a test suite formed by selected minimum number of most critical tests. The purpose of this test suite is to quickly measure the basic health of a test build. If the basic health is poor, then don't bother running the rest of your tests. For example, 
if we are testing an e-commerce website, we have a thousand tests in total. Then select one test on login, one test on shopping cart, one test on placing an order, and one test on checkout. Should be enough to form a smoke test suite. If any of these tests fails, it may not worth running other tests. Number three, regression test. It means when your product has new code changes, all tests should be executed instead of only execute those tests newly added for testing the new code changes. The main purpose of doing this. Is to prevent old features of your product from being broken by the new code changes. All right, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, share, like, and comment. See you next time.